Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. And by Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray and Rock God Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hook up on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here. Rock God Rick Maxa is on the Royal Star. As we heard earlier in the show, Gary Graham helping our wildest Baja dreams come true here <laughs> in uh, the studio here. And uh, having a good time talking Baja, talking local fishing, talking a little bit of saltwater fly fishing. And a lot going on here on Let's Talk Hook Up. Giving away a pair of Maui Jim sunglasses today. The Twin Falls. A gloss black frame Maui Pure, which is a great lens with a neutral gray lens. It's a perfect pair of sunglasses for your next fishing trip, courtesy of Maui Gem. And another lucky caller is going to win a real collector's item. This is the Sea Cortez by Ray Cannon. Uh, it's a, it, it is truly a collector's item. I want to thank Gary and Yvonne for, for bringing that. That's, I mean, I had that book when I was a little kid. When was the first print on that book? Oh, in seven. 71, I think. 71, yeah. Pretty amazing. And one lucky caller is going to win that collector item book, uh, The Sea of Cortez by Ray Cannon, uh, thanks to Gary and Yvonne. And it's time for the Fetch Catch Report today. It's sponsored in part by Terrafin Sea Surface Temperature Charts. Terrafin Charts give you the latest water conditions, help you catch more fish, and save fuel. They're helpful year-round, like today, to find the best water conditions. And the new and Proved Terrafin Mobile. You can have it on your Android or your Apple device. Uh, it's pretty amazing. You can download the charts. I look at it every day. Um, f- you can watch the water move and such like that. And then you can take it with you and actually use it to find the water edge there. Terrafin is an amazing piece of machinery there, and it's very inexpensive. For more information, go to Terrafin, T E R R A F I N dot com. Let's start it up with our fishdope.com report. Our private motor buddy, Captain Mark Wish from Pacific Edge. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Gary. Hey, Mark. How you doing? Hey, everything's good, buddy. You guys are doing a great show. Thanks but, very much. So here we are, first week of December, and still I'm able to talk about offshore fishing and exotics, thanks to El Nino. And they just came out with some new numbers yesterday that this event, you know, and they measure in a couple different areas down there, but in the Nino 3.4 region, which is kind of the benchmark, biggest ever November numbers beats 97. So wow! This, yeah, is this? They, they they still got a ways to go to know if it'll be proclaimed the biggest ever. They haven't. You know, we're not that far into the the, the system yet, but uh, man, it's this is just absolutely epic. And, you know, and obviously we're seeing the benefits here. We Got Skipjack and Marlin up above the west end of Catalina between the island and the 125. A decent amount of Marlin up there, guys. And then uh, there's a few scattered around the east end down there in the Bait area. Got a number of boats out looking for that last fish of the season, and we got nice weather here this weekend, so it looks like it'd be pretty doable. Would not be a bit surprised to see a few caught there. As far as those yellowfin tuna going, Still, uh, mostly schooly grade fish. There are a few nice ones mixed in, those 20 to 30s. And uh, they're really liking the anchovies, guys. Get those anchovies, light line, small hooks, and the key is getting ahead of those dolphins and throwing some bait and stopping the fish and then just sitting there and fishing them out. But uh, it's not bad fishing, but it looks like the area is, you know, it's trickling down. It is in December, so probably ought to get after that before the weather changes and those fish leave. But the upper edge of the area is that break between the 181 and Del Mar. There's a nice little edge there, and some of that fish has been on the cool side of the edge. It's about a two-degree break, but you want to look on both sides of it there. And then... Between the 178 and the 182, and then on down to the banks that are just below the border. There's, uh, you know, there's warm water throughout and scattered fish, pretty much uh, all through that zone. And then still an outside chance for a while. We've heard of a couple bite offs here this week, so still a few, <clears throat> a few of those around inshore. If you guys like to fish rockfish, you know, remember it shuts down at the first of the year here for a couple months, so you probably want to get out while the weather's still good. And uh, because it's going to change. And then as far as those deep water yellows, we've been kind of waiting for them to start biting. But, you know, just a sample this week. They're around, I'm sure, but uh, not all that much caught. But for me, of 
even more interest is a little bit more uh, sea bass signal. There's been some deep water fish caught kind of in that same zone there, Horseshoe 150 area, right where we were finding them this time last year. And uh, also of interest is more sign on the bigger halibut, and again, deeper water. Some of the guys that are sharp on their bounce ball in there, 115 to 125 feet there have been uh, doing okay on that nicer flat fish. But without a doubt, and this might be the first time ever in many years of doing this report to uh, mention this particular species because this has to be the exotic of the week. John and I were fishing last Sunday on a tip from the famous Captain Dave Hansen. We ran down toward Dana to check out a little halibut area, and I think he might have been sandbagging me. I don't. I don't know that the halibuts were Dave, there. Dave sandbagging you? <laughs> yeah, kidding me? Yeah, Come on. Wonder, you know, I, I might have had his directions wrong. You know, we might not have been in the right spot. We did not catch any halibut, although we gave it a worthy effort. But let me tell you, we caught. Well, not we. John caught the biggest, slimiest lizard fish I have no. ever <laughs> seen in my life. It ate a mackerel, Pete. Come on. Was, honest to God, it looked like a legal barracuda. The thing was. Of stupendous dimensions. I had no idea they got so big. Oh we couldn't my. wait to get rid of that thing. Oh my! Yeah, really. Mark, no I am really embarrassed it's, for you. If yeah, that's your hot it's fish not, of the yeah. day. It's too bad that Ricky's not here. You'd really be getting some flack now, because you know he is the li- lizard fish king. He loves those lizard fish. Hey, not we just really. call him like we see him. Guys. Yeah, but this, sure. I was just shocked at this. Well, I did wonder he, if did Danny he catch on... it on a fly. <laughs> <laughs> did Danny on Fish Dope report that for you, Mark? Yeah, you know, in all honesty. <laughs> Danny does an absolutely fantastic job of putting up my reports, but I, I had a little hesitancy about giving him that <laughs> giving one. Giving him that one, I understand. I, I, but, could. of course, you get the reports. Dave gives them the reports. Fishdope.com is the place to get your information year-round, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. They have the reports and the information, the weather charts, the the uh, temperature charts. The whole thing is all there on Fish Dope and one low price. And if you're a new member, you save 20 bucks by using the code HOOKUPNOW. It's all lowercase, no space, HOOKUPNOW. And, Mark, how do we find you? V, we're in Huntington Beach on the corner of Bolsa Chica and Edinger. Phone number 714-840-4262. The website is PacificEdgeTackle.com. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. We'll have another lizard fish report or something. Yeah. Here. We'll <laughs> now, we'll be live at, uh, in Cabo San Lucas at the Pueblo Bonito uh, there. So we'll be talking to you from Cabo. That's not fair. I'm I heard sorry. You guys talk. Yeah, I'm going to be there too, Mark. <laughs> yeah, he'll be there with us. All right, Mark, uh, talk to you next Saturday. Appreciate okay, that. We'll and we'll it. see you in the studio two weeks from today. For our Christmas spectacular, believe me. I am so much looking forward to it, Pete. We always have so much fun with that. Two show. weeks from today, great. Christmas spectacular here on Let's Talk Hook Up. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. Let's yeah. head over to C4 Sport Fishing. Talk to Marcos. Good morning, Marcos. Good morning, guys. How are you doing today? Great. Well, we're pretty much uh, the same report this week as last week. Some very good bottom fishing on the the uh, half day there. And like you're just talking about, we've only got less than a month of that left now before they close it for a little bit there. They did see some yellowtail on some of those trips on the, in the afternoon, mostly on the half day. 22 on Tuesday, I believe, was the high point this week. 8 in the afternoon on Wednesday. So there's definitely that possibility there in the way the season's going. I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue for a while. The three-quarter day trip, San Diego, still going offshore, still catching yellowfin. Um, not necessarily limits on all of those, but, I mean, come on, it's December here. They did have limits on Tuesday. They had 52 on Wednesday, they had 33 on Thursday, so they're definitely still catching fish there. And only a few more days for San Diego before they take a well-deserved break there. He's scheduled through Tuesday, then he's off for about a week and a half there. We may put one of the other boats online, depending on how fishing is, but as bizarre as it sounds, there's no standing operating procedure for yellowfin in December. Don't know how that's going to go, so we're just going to play it by ear there. So definitely keep an eye on the website, seaforthlanding.com. Have our half-day trips up there, our three-quarter day trips. The Outer Limits is running day and a half trips. They're out on one right now. The next couple weekends are going out also. So we'll see how they're doing. So check the website. Give us a call to office, 619-224-3383. We're happy to get you out there and get you some fishing. Sounds good. Yeah. Tuna in December. And who's going to catch the first tuna of 2016? Uh, exactly. You know, one of our customers, I think, this year on the half day caught a yellowfin. Not the tuna, but he caught a, or excuse me, a yellowtail every month of the year this year. Wow. Pretty fantastic. He kept track of it, and he just caught his December one, so. Gotta love it. I'm surprised that keep going there, you know. Some yeah. elephant still going on here. Doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Heck no. Well, great, Marcos. Thanks a lot for that, and we will talk to you next Saturday. We'll talk to you then, guys. All right. Thanks a lot. And that is our catch for today, sponsored in part by Gamakatsu Hooks, Japan's leading hook 
fish hook sets the standard for quality and innovation and strength and durability. Long range season is here, and the Gamakatsu Nautilus circle hook, ring hook, standard J hook are the top anglers' first choice for fishing tuna and other pelagic species. They have the right design and durability to help you catch that fish of a lifetime. Get Gamakatsu hooks, including the Super Nautilus circle hook, at your favorite tackle store. Phones are packed up, one line open, you want to get through. Here is your chance, 877-792-1090. You have a chance to win that pair of Maui Gym sunglasses and a chance to win that collector item, Sia Cortez by Ray Cannon. Charlie in Gardena, you're next up on Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Fantastic. Great. I had a question for Gary. It's, uh, you know, it has to do with fishing down there around Mag Bay. And if you trailer a boat, how much time do you need and... You, or is that a good place to try to catch wahoo? Good question. Uh, yes, it's a good place to catch wahoo at that during usually October November window is the usual time. They're catching them right now, but that's unusual that it goes into December. But um, who knows what it'll be next year? But as far as trailer boats are concerned, uh, it's a, a very interesting place to to take your boat too for a variety of different reasons the uh, magdalena bay is 121 miles long and um so and you have all these esteros and channels that you can fish inside the bay if the way and it's that's really nice if you're on a trailer boat you can fish the inside on the days when it's rough and it you don't want to go outside so it gives you some other options inside you get snook pargo corvina uh, occasionally a, a rooster fish uh, that's unusual but they do catch them there and um, a number of other bottom fish so it's it's really an interesting fishery on the outside uh, Thetis Bank is renowned for Wahoo but uh, you can catch them on the 100 fathom curve as well depending on what the sea temp is there just outside of Lazaro or Magdalena Island uh, so there's a lot of different things to do time wise um, what size boat do you have? A 20? Um, it probably, I would allow two days to get down there. Yeah, two days. And so where would you turn into? Uh, I would go to Lopez Mateos probably, only because Lopez Mateos, well, it has a good launch ramp, but it's closer to the Boca. It's only five miles from the entrance to the sea of, or to the uh, Pacific, so you don't have to go as far. If you go to San Carlos, which has also has a good ramp, However, it's 19 miles to the Entrada, so you have to run a long ways to get outside. Lopez Mateos is north of San Carlos. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you don't go to Constitucion. You just have to go to Insurgentes, where you'd turn left to go on down uh, Mex 1. You turn to the right, and it's about 30 miles into Lopez Mateos. But it's a, a lot uh, the hotels are a little dicey there. There isn't a lot of hotels there, but there are. I think there's a new one that just opened up. But um, that's that would be my choice. It gives you the upper end of the um, of Magdalena Bay, the upper third, and that's where the fishing seems to be the best because it doesn't get as much pressure. I know uh, Paula Pora wrote a book, Trailering in Baja, that kind of details a lot of that stuff. Is exactly. that book still available? Uh, you know, I assume it is on probably on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it's not, it out might of print. be something that you want to pick up. Right. Uh, any well, other good sources? Oh, uh, Zach. Zach Thomas did a trailer boat. Oh, okay. Zach Thomas. Yeah. Did a trailer boat, Trailering in Baja. Also. Right. Exactly. So there's one, Trailering in Baja, by Paul Lepore, L E P O R E. Uh, so if you look that up, and then uh, Zach Thomas. Thomas, yeah, uh, T H tra- and w- same trailering yeah. in Baja. It might exactly. be a good idea to pick them both up, right. and answer some real questions for you there. Okay, thanks guys. All right, Charlie, good, good luck. luck on the trip. It sounds like, you know, uh, thanks a lot for call. That's one of the the regrets is I never made that trip, uh, trailering a boat down there. Oh, really? And going, I may I've been to in those areas, but Not never had the opportunity to kind of do it on, on yeah, my own. Yeah, do it yourself. And, yeah, it's, it's so much fun, more fun to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. for sure, no mm-hmm. doubt. You've done it. A few times. Yeah, a few times. Yeah, yeah he raises it out <laughs> or a few times, like dozens, right? <laughs> hey, let's go ahead and jump back into those jam-packed phone lines and talk to Dave and Anza. Good morning, Dave. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, Gary, I really enjoy your road track feature in the Western Outdoor News. It brings back a lot of old Baja travel memories there. I know the um, first time a buddy and I, we drove the Trans Peninsula down to Cabo San Lucas in 1976, 
the uh, highway had just been open a couple of years at that time, and we did it, my old 66 Dotson pickup. I think all we had in the back was uh, a couple of sleeping bags, a Coleman stove, and a cooler full of beer, but we made it anyhow. And I remember we got to that little town of Cabo San Lucas down there at Land's End. We just went down to the beach, had a nice view of the sea arch, and we camped out right on the beach in Cabo. And I know those are days long gone. So um, a question for you is um, it's been several years since we've actually uh, traveled down the trans Peninsula Highway. We now travel with a Ford F-350, and I pull a 28-foot fifth-wheel trailer. It's a big step up from the old Dawson pickup days there. I just wondered, for having a larger RV, what's it like traveling on the trans Peninsula as far as the road conditions and facilities and infrastructure along the way? If you drove down there in 76, you'll think you died and gone to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit virgin territory back then. I made my first trip down there in 73, right after the road opened. But anyway, to answer your question, the roads are in the best shape I've ever seen them. I drive the roads at least twice a year, if not more. And uh, I've probably, I, I, I tell people I've driven it over 300 times, and I have no idea how many more. It's one of the few things I, I have not kept track of for obvious reasons. I just don't want to know. But anyway, the, the roads are good. Um, the, there's some more. You have a lot more traffic to deal with, particularly from the border to San Quentin. Once you get to El, below that to El Rosario, the traffic goes away uh, until you get to La Paz. When you get to La Paz, you've got more traffic to deal with and stay out of the I, – would advise to stay out of town and just go on down to Cabo if that's where you're going or wherever you happen to be going. But uh, the highways below uh, below La Paz, both, they're good highways going either direction. You can go down the Pacific side or the Sea of Cortez side, and I don't think you have any problems. I see people dr- pulling rigs like you're describing frequently, and, and uh, I don't personally. I drive a one-ton. The road trek's a one-ton Dodge, but uh, self-contained. But, but anyway, I don't think you have any problems. It, the roads are in good shape, they, and they they stay on it now. If there's a storm or something, they they now have Lego type bridges that when if a bridge even gets blown out, they can replace it within a week. I mean, they've really? got parts laying around for it. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Anyway, cool. so I think you have a good time. Okay, well, I know in the old days we used to just pull off the side of the road anywhere and camp out, which is not too advisable anymore. What is it like as far as uh, overnight spots to stay on the way down if you're traveling by RV? Uh, you'll find that there's plenty of them. There's a lot more motels as well as uh, RV spots, but you won't have any problem finding places. And most of them will have Wi-Fi. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, pretty fantastic. Dave, thanks a lot for the call. Good question there. Appreciate that. Let's talk to Michael in San Diego. Hi, Michael. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Michael. Hi, how you doing? Sorry. Great. Hey, uh, actually, previous caller kind of answered one of my questions about traveling down there, but uh, about a year and a half ago, I got into kayak fishing. One of the things I always wanted to do was do a road trip kayak fishing in Mexico. C- can you talk to the, the safety? I have a buddy who's just like, no, not Mexico, but you know, I used to go down all the time as a kid, so it, it's, I know you know a while ago it wasn't as safe, but I know lately it's it's fairly safe now, right? Uh, yes, it is safe, and obviously there's some things I wouldn't advise. I, I sure wouldn't go just camp on a, a deserted beach somewhere anymore. Um, that those days are gone anywhere. It's just like I wouldn't camp in a in a, a rest stop on uh, I-5 for that matter. You know, I just don't. But as far as being safe, I drive alone, and I drive up and down. The, as I said on the last caller, I drive frequently and. Uh, as far as safety, I don't worry about that kind of uh, other than a breakdown or something like that. But as far as uh, and then as with regard to the kayaks, uh, I just did a trip to uh, I was in Loretto in July and we had six kay- Hobies down there that we were doing a Hobie thing with. And uh, uh, the kayaks are cool. I mean, uh, it's it's a great way to fish. I uh, caught a marlin while I was down there, which was on kind the of kayak? Cool. On the kayak. Wow. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's pretty so, cool. and, and was that it, on a pro angler? Uh, no, it was on a uh, Hobie. Uh, oh, yeah, on a, a pro, pro angler. angler. Yeah, yeah, those yeah, are right, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know the names that yeah. well. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, but it was kind of an accidental deal. We had gone down there for Dorado and so on and so forth. And uh, 
and other exotics in the striped marlin happen to be there. And as a matter of fact, they're still there now, which is really weird. But uh, So the the big recommendation was don't camp on a solitary beach. Don't camp on a solitary so beach. Where and by camp? the way, one other thing is don't drive at night. I, every I, People say this and... and and like those guys that are over on the mainland, the surfers that got into big trouble right. there, they sh- they were driving at night. It was the middle of the night, 1230 at night when it was when all that happened, when yeah. it all went down. And you just don't want to be on the road at night for a lot of different reasons. Some of the bad the people The cattle, the, the, you know, there's all all the reasons in the world for you to be situated on it. And there are a lot of campsites on the beach where you can stay in complete safety. Just not, I'm saying not to go out in a deserted beach and and but a, a campsite that's a, a structured yeah exactly pay, or, or pay per visit uh, campsite yeah that's and there are lots of there's like conception other people pay. there yeah exactly yeah. okay yeah. very good hey thanks a lot for the phone call this morning and when we come back more of your phone calls more with mr gary graham you stay tuned southern california sport fishing voice is let's talk hook up mighty 10 night Inland Boat Center is the destination for your next boat. They've been around 35 years, so they're here to stay with something for everyone. Inland Boat Center has a giant inventory of all types of boats, including the perfect saltwater fishing boats made by Arima and Defiance. Inland Boat Center has a huge 2.5-acre indoor showroom with over 300 new and pre-owned boats, making them the largest boat store on the West Coast. Family-owned and operated, they are proud of their customer service. They take trades of all types. Come check out their inventory of Defiance boats from 20 to 29 feet or the fantastic selection of the amazing Arima boats from 17 to 21 feet. Inland Boat Center has a full service department, fiberglass repair and upholstery department. Everything you need is under one roof at Inland Boat Center, 681 East San Jacinto in Paris. Check the website for the current inventory and more at InlandBoatCenter.com. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 55 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision-built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built for ultimate performance on the water. From our next-generation fishing shorts like the Tactical Camo or Stealth Shorts to our AFBlock sun protection shirts like the Fish Ninja and Samurai Sun Hoodie, the entire AFCO clothing lineup is purpose-built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and designed with functional features to deliver Top performance for the demanding angler. Visit www.afco.com to find a dealer near you. This is Rick Jensen with Sport Fishing Financial. By now, some of you have already been out fishing with me or even on board as new clients. For others out there who couldn't make it during the recent offshore fishing season, now's a great time to see how we can help you. Business owners with 401ks or qualified retirement plans, you know things could be better, and why don't we sit down and see how we can make it better? Business owners that are out there that don't have a plan, I'll walk you through the steps and create the plan that's right for you and your employees. For others that have retirement plans with former employers or personal IRAs, let's put them to work where you know how much risk you're exposed to and what kind of expenses you're being charged. Now's the time to put more focus on the long-term funding of your fishing lifestyle. Rick and I had some great times together out on the water this season, and I know you're going to enjoy meeting him. Managing your investment accounts should be simple and efficient. Give Rick a call at 949 481 1807, or find them on the web at sportfishingfinancial.com. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now 18 stores throughout Southern California and three in San Diego County. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood, Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. The Sport Fishing Association of California is taking a leadership role to broaden the fishing opportunities for Southern California anglers. And Saturday, December 12th, Pete Gray will be traveling to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, with the president of SAC, Captain Ken Frankie, and his staff to host a very important live broadcast from Pueblo Benito Rose Resort in Cabo. The broadcast will feature some key personnel from Mexico fisheries and help strengthen the ties with the sport fishing fleet in Southern California and Mexico. They will also 
discuss the great fishing opportunities available in Cabo San Lucas. SAC's mission is to promote tourism through marine recreation and educational activities while protecting ocean resources. By working together with Mexico, we can show our care for the resources, both at home and across the border, and our desire to take an active role to help protect the future of our fisheries. So mark your calendar for Saturday, December 12th, a very special live broadcast from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, with the Sport Fishing Association of California. Check CaliforniaSportFishing.org for more information. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, CalSTAR. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the CalSTAR West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend CalSTAR at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Peak here, here with uh, Gary Graham having a great time talking fishing. And speaking of fishing, speaking of Baja, our good buddy Rick Jensen from Sport Fishing Financials on the line. He's got a new feature for us, and that is going to be the Northern Baja and Central Baja Fish Report. And Rick, what do you got for us today? Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, Gary, Pete. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, Rick? Good, good. Hey, uh, well, the big news, uh, uh, Gary touched on it earlier, is that the Wahoo are definitely still around Mag Bay, and uh, a couple of boats headed north of there and uh, got into over 40 fish with two lightly loaded boats in just over an hour. And, and those were good fish, mid-double digits. So Whoa. Nice fish up there. No kidding. That's good stuff. And then uh, further north in La Bocana, they're still finding a nice grade of tuna up to 30 pounds. Uh, a variety of grouper, snapper, and even occasional snook. Uh, Fargo are showing up in the bay. Up at San Quentin, the yellowtail are still a bit scattered. Uh, they're, they're on the high spots, but not biting like they were about a week ago. There's a there's still the good, moderate to good bite on the on the rockfish. They're always there, and that's always a fallback. And San Martin, Isla San Martin has been. Uh, without kelp pretty much for a while. So fishing with the calicos there is a little different than the typical kelp fishing. But uh, we were there a couple of weeks ago, and just for the heck of it, we we were fly lining a full-size mackerel and got a big calico to take that. So that was kind of exciting. Nice. And, uh, and, and you know, that can be kind of fun. And then uh, you're looking over the Sea of Cortez on the northern side, as we know, it gets a little windy there this time of year, so we don't have a lot of good reports in that area. But, you know, on a downwind day, I'm sure the fish are still around. And Gary, you mentioned that uh, as far north as you've seen uh, rooster fish at Benelli Bay, and we've in fact caught a few of them at Gonzaga. Nothing big or exciting, but sometimes they school up in those little inside bays, and uh, we've we got to show them up there. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's pretty neat, Rick. And uh, Rick, classic example of Rick, uh, of course, is a financial planner, uh, sport fishing financial. He started this business to cater to uh, people that need his services in the fishing industry, and it just shows you. The real fisherman. How do we find you at Sport Fishing Financial? We want to talk to you about uh, about having you uh, look at uh, things, look like all the different things that you do, right? Yeah, find us on the web at sportfishingfinancial.com or uh, give me a ring, 949-481-1807. We'll, we'll talk Northern Baja and finance Northern Baja for you. There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah help, you, help you get there so that you can go down and do those trips to Northern Baja. Thanks, Rick Jensen, Sport Fishing Financial. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Have a good day, guys. All right, appreciate Thanks. that very much. Nice job. Appreciate that very much. Let's go ahead and jump into those jam-packed phone lines. Jeffrey and Rosarito, speaking of Northern Baja. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning, Pete and Gary. How's everything going today? Excellent. Great. I have two questions, one for you, Pete, and uh, first, the other one for uh, Gary. I used to fish a lot in the cliffs, and sometimes you know, I'd use one or two fishing poles for the calicos with squid, and I was wondering if I'd be better off just concentrating on one pole or using two and hopefully uh, catching a few when they want to bite. I I think I'd stick with one. Yeah, yeah I think sure. you'd do a lot better that way. Yeah, I think just because... You can you got to stay in touch right. with what you're doing there, and if you use two, it's just not nearly as effective. So stick with the one, Jeff. You'll have better results. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Let's go ahead and jump back into those phones. Talk to Chris in San Diego. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. 
Good. How's it going? Um, I just have a question about the dog tooth tuna. Yeah. Um, where are they generally caught at? Gary? Well, that particular fish came from South Africa, so you're going to have to go, go a ways. And then I... Uh, in about, they catch them down in Fiji. Fiji uh, and uh, Haiti. Right. All South of that Pacific. area. Right. Uh, that's why Cass was talking about Christmas Island, which exactly. is right literally on the equator. Right. Um, it's a, it's a, and they catch them in Australia, of course. Right. I, I believe Zealand, they catch them yeah. in northern New Zealand. Yeah. So it's that southern... Uh, equator, south of the equator, yeah. so down in the tropics. And what do they range in, like, for size? Uh, well, the one that's the world record is uh, three, uh, three, something, three right? something. It's three plus. So I think, but commonly time. 100 to 200 pounds. Yeah. It's very common. And if you pick up that uh, new copy of the Bite Journal, uh, it's available now. It's got a black cover. It's uh, uh, at uh, local tackle stores now, and we actually have it on our website, hookup1090.com. You can go to our store page. And order it, and uh, we'll ship it right to you. It's actually got a photo of the old, of the old one uh, on there, but we'll ship you the new issue. So check it out. It's quite a story, and uh, how you found all that information out, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right, let's head to Puerto Vallarta. My good buddy Russell O'Neill, Captain Russell from the Journeyman's on the line. Good morning, Russell. Morning, guys. How are you? Hey, doing terrific. Really looking forward to coming south tomorrow and going fishing with you aboard the Journeyman. How's it going? It's good. We're out here just uh, on the last third day of a three and a half day here, and we're scratching away pretty good. No, uh, no full speed fishing, but good fishing on like one tens to one fifties, one sixties, and uh, it's been been pretty good fishing. So we're looking forward to having you come down tomorrow, Pete. Hopefully you don't bring the wind with you. Ah, no, it's going to be beautiful weather and uh, awesome fishing there. Russell, so you do two-and-a-half-day and, and three-and-a-half-day trips out of uh, Nuevo Vallarta, out of Puerto Vallarta, very easy to get to with nonstop flights out of San Diego on Alaska Airlines, nonstop flights out of Los Angeles uh, on Alaska. Uh, it's an easy deal, and you have a chance to catch a, a cow, right? Yes, it's been, uh, we're just getting rolling here with our season, kind of been busy getting this new little boat down here, but it's a uh, first trip here, and it's been pretty good fit, and, and I was just calling in to let you guys know that uh, we actually have, uh, we put another open party trip online here on February 25th to the 29th. It's a three and a half day, we don't do many open party trips, we have we have some more open dates in January, but we're pretty we booked up for February and March, and so I just wanted to put uh, put another uh, open party half day trip online for February 25th through the 29th. All right, that's a great time of the year to go down there and fish on the Journeyman. And Journeyman is six passengers maximum. Uh, beautiful, beautiful yacht fishing. Uh, Russell's got everything equipped on there: Ultra Model tackle, and Calstar rods, and the equipment and the and the and the tackle is first class. You don't need to bring anything but your hat and sunglasses, right, Russell? That's right. That's right. And the the watching ongos are biting again. Oh, gotta love that. We had such amazing watching ongo fishing down there last year. So I look forward to that, man. It's uh, it that sounds good. We need to bring some jigs. Or you got them all equipped. You can bring some flat balls and maybe some uh. <laughs> some diamond jigs and stuff, but we pretty much have most of the stuff on the boat here for you guys. And uh, it's fun it's fishing, you know, it's fun fishing. It's a real fun grade. Now there's definitely some big ones right now. around. We had a couple heartbreakers last night, but uh, it's, it's good fun fishing. The group's having fun. We got nice weather, and we're just getting rolling here for the season. So uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Open party trip. You can go online at jurandsportfishing.com or you can call Cindy, the secretary in the office, direct at 858 616 7066. All right. February 25th to the 29th, uh, open party, three and a half day trip on the journeyman. Uh, hard to get on the boat. I can't believe you actually have an opening. It won't last long. Journeymansportfishing.com. Russell O'Neill. Captain Russell, we'll see you tomorrow for in Puerto Vallarta. We'll see you at the airport, Pete. Looking forward to it. And uh, you guys have a good day. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, that
get me excited there. Yeah. Yeah. The dog tooth tuna was two twenty six. Two twenty six. Yeah. The one that's in in the bite. In the bite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Right. But they do get bigger than that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's gonna be. A, that's got to be a catch. Right. You ever caught one? No. 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 no Not I've, very many people have. No. Exactly. Unless you've been to Australia or, or New Zealand. New or Zealand. Or, or right. Fiji or, or something like that. South Africa or, or someplace. Christmas yeah. Island. Like yeah. Cass is gonna go. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones and talk to John from Lakeside. Hi, John. Good morning, Pete and Gary. How are you? Very good. Perfect. If I had a week to do a road trip uh, to fish the beach, where would be a great location to target, Gary? I would. What time of year? June, July. Uh, I would say probably East Cape area. You have 30 miles of beach there. Uh, that you can fish that's very fishable and it's very accessible. And uh, you can then up above there at uh, Las Arenas, you got more beach up there. So that would be where I'd go. I fish that beach every year for for 19 years. And what do you catch there? Roosterfish, jacks, uh, pargo, pompano, occasionally a dorado. No surf because it's a Sea of Cortez site. What's so. your biggest, uh, biggest uh, uh, fish off the beach there? Uh, biggest, my personal biggest is probably about 40 pounds, but uh, rooster fish, uh, rooster fish, I've seen rooster fish up to 60 wow. caught from the beach or wow. let go. Was that on a fly? Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's a big fish. There you go, John. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Let's jump back on the phones and talk to Dennis in Norwalk. Hi, Dennis. Yes. Good morning, guys. Good morning. I have a question for your guest there, Gary. Yes, sir. I've never fished on the surf over there before. I just started surfing, uh, fishing around Long Beach area and everything. Uh, what tackle and what uh, size line, or did you do about the same type of uh, casting the line out? Just wait out, I guess, around uh, waist deep, I guess, and try to go as far as you can. And what type of bait also did you use over there? Well, use mainly lures. There's a variety of different, either top water or there's some a, a lure called a Cabo Killer that Steve Jensen down in Cabo um, he developed them and he now sells them at the shop there and they're online. You can look them up and find them. Uh, as far as tackle, um, the serious guys that are fishing the surf these days are fishing 12 foot rods and uh, Stella reels and full braid and throwing uh, the Cabo Killers, that type of lure. Ranger lures. Ranger lures. lures um, uh, any of the, and also the chrome lures, but any of those. And uh, Roosterfish go wild when you skip things, right? Yeah, exactly. Anything yeah. Cut on the surface. And that's one of the reasons they use such long uh, spinning rods. Now, these guys are fishing on the, on the uh, Pacific side, so they're dealing with surf. On the uh, East Cape side that I just mentioned, you can fish any almost any tackle you want from from 12 pound on up to uh, braid to 30 pound, 40 pound braid. All right, there you go, Dennis. Thanks a lot for the call, Craig and Vista. You're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Hello, Craig. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, Gary, four of us old guys are going to be driving down to Mag Bay to do a bucket list routine. We're going to go down in a truck, no boat. We want to spend a week fishing both inside and outside of the bay, and I'd like to have your recommendation on somebody who can put that together, the boat, the bed, and the food. We don't care about the frills. We just want to make sure once we drive there, we've got access to those three things. What's your suggestion, please? Bob Hoyt operates a company called Mag Bay Outfitters, and he's in uh, Lopez Mateos. He can do the bed. He can do the bath. He can do the boat. You've got it all. Got it all. So Mag Bay Outfitters, just Google him up. Yeah, Google him up, and his name's Bob Hoyt. And he's got a great reputation, right? Yeah. yeah. And what's the best month to go? Uh, if it were me, it would be either late October or early November. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gary. Oh, sure right. thing. Good luck. Thanks Keep me, a lot. Have let fun. me know how you do. Yeah. I will. Go. I'll email you. All right. Thank you. All right. How do you get in touch with somebody who wants, like, Craig wants to get a hold of you. How do we get in touch with you? BajaFly.com. BajaFly.com. That's yep. your website. Yep. Has all the information Has and all your the... books and everything on yep. there. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Very... Or you can read all about it in Western Outdoor News. Or BD Outdoors. BD Outdoors. You're on BD Outdoors every day. Yep. Right? Right. There you go. All right. Bruce and Temecula, you're next up on Let's Talk Hooker. Good morning. 
Good morning, fellas. How's everything going? Excellent. You answered my first question uh, just a second ago, but I wanted to let you know, Pete, I can't be in Mexico. I'll be on an airplane to, to Boston for business. Oh, <laughs> darn. That's bad news. But here's the good news. Alaska has Internet service. So I'll be able to listen to the show. Fantastic. Yeah, they, 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 uh, you, that's a great flight, too, San Diego. You're doing that San Diego to Boston nonstop? Nonstop, right. Yeah, it's a great flight. So I'll miss you there, but I'll, I'll see you later in the week. I'll send you an email. Man. Um, <clears throat> but I was disappointed. It sounds like it's going to be an incredible event. Yeah, it's going to be a really great event uh, there. Next Saturday from Cabo at the Pueblo Manito with the Sport Fishing Consortium. We're going to have a lot of the... The local dignitaries down there, a lot of the Mexico fisheries guys talking to us about Mexico fishing, and a lot of the local operators there in Cabo San Lucas will give us some insight on if you're coming to Cabo, uh, where to fish, how to fish, and all that too. Yeah. So it should be great. It should be a really good one. Yeah. So. That, that is just super. Now it's going to be a regular time for us here in San Diego, seven, seven to nine. Seven to nine a.m. here okay. in San Diego. So eight to ten where you are. Eight exactly. Eight to ten where we are. We get to sleep in a little bit, but uh, right. but uh, uh, it's going to be great. Seven to nine right here on the Mighty Ten Ninety a week from today. And uh, glad you're going to hear us from thirty six thousand feet. Appreciate the call this morning. Let's talk to Harry in La Jolla. Hi, Harry. Good morning. Um, I have to agree with you guys. The Bite is an incredible magazine. I've I've had it since the first one came out. I think that that first one's going to become a, a collector's item. Uh, Pete, last week we uh, we talked a little bit about that road. Uh, in March, uh, I and a couple of fellows we went down the uh, that side of uh, Baja and we saw the construction firsthand. That road is going to be phenomenal. The Mexico uh, 5 you're talking on the inside. Right, exactly. Uh, what I wanted to do, and I hope he's listening in, uh, John Ireland uh, underwent some surgery for his shoulder because he's fished so much. Yeah, he didn't have uh, a, undergo some surgery. He had his shoulder replaced. Yeah, <laughs> and I just wanted, I hope he's listening in. I want to wish him well, and I hope everybody who can reach him lets lets him know uh, how much they appreciated uh, what he does. Yeah, you know, I talked to John this week, and uh, everything went very, very well with his surgery. And uh, 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 Dr. Honeke over at, the, uh, at at Scripps in La Jolla did the surgery, who's a, who's a Baja guy and a Rancho Leonero fan. The ranch you you met him at the ranch, yeah. a really nice guy, and right. one of the top surgeons in San Diego <laughs> certainly did the surgery, and it apparently came out very, very well. So. Good. Get well, John. Get well quickly and get back on the water because we have a trip. I told him, you know, we're going with Cass uh, to Pesca, Panama in April. Yeah. I said, you better be able to cast those poppers <laughs> by April. <laughs> he said, I certainly hope so. Nice to hear from you, Harry. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's talk to Jeff in Santee. Hi, Jeff. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, really enjoying the show. Hey, had a quick question there. Um we had a really fun trip down to uh, San Felipe uh, several years ago, and we caught a boatload of Corvina. Wondering if 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 now is a good time of year to go down there. Is it? Uh, is there any surf ever any surface bite going on down there? You know, there was a month ago, and I'm not going to answer. I don't know about. I haven't seen a report out of there in the last week or two. But uh, because of the conditions in this El Nino thing, I would imagine that yeah, it probably would be. If you email me or just go to my website, and there's uh, my emails on there. Bahafly. Bahafly at Bahafly. dot com is my email, and shoot me an email. I'll see if I can find out find out for you. How do you access that? Uh, I, uh, my, I'm sorry. No. How do you get there? Oh, uh, down through Mexicali? Down through Mexicali. Yeah. Yeah. That's the easiest one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. Can you go, okay. can you cross at Tijuana and go across uh -huh. over to yeah. San Felipe? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a longer, longer way of, around. Yeah. You're better off going out Highway 8, crossing the border at Mexicali. Exactly. And then it's an easy, what, two and a half hour drive down yeah. there? Yeah. I don't think it's that long, but Not yeah. Even. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Mike in Allied Gardens, you're next up on Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Great show. I uh, wanted to ask Gary about uh, heading down to uh, Bay of L.A., and before I did it with an inflatable, just a 15-foot inflatable outboard motor, and uh, had a great time thinking about taking a 19 down there. Uh, and uh, But the vehicle I have now is a lot more expensive, and I just was wondering about 
uh, visually, you know, going down with a nicer vehicle, is there any problems with, uh, you know, being pulled over and things like that and having to do bribes and different things like that to either police or people who think they're police? Um, and just wanted to ask you about that, the safety factor. Well, I, as I've said all during the show, I, I drive the road quite a bit, and I don't find, I have not, and I also am driving a fairly expensive vehicle. So um, uh, basically, I have not found that to be an issue. I I was stopped. The last time I was stopped was in uh, La Paz, and it was this year, and it was for a stop sign, and it was uh, every car that came to the stop sign rolled through it and uh i guess i did too and uh the cops so you were me. guilty yeah so i was guilty but um uh did and you pay the fine right there or did you keep on no I, I paid the fine i went went to the police station and did all that but okay. it was 20 bucks or something it wasn't a big deal but uh so you don't advise giving the money to the policeman no right there. no 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 if 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 you do get stopped just be firm about you that you'll take the ticket and you'll go you'll follow them but i what i do is say you got to take me there i don't know where the police station yeah. is if they balk on that then you probably aren't going to pay the ticket yeah <laughs> and that happens i mean i've had that happen too what? that you just never pay the ticket no that i've said i take me to the station and they all of a sudden get really busy and and haven't got time to do see that. you later right yeah right so okay let's talk about first of all you said driving at night don't do it don't do it don't, don't do it. drive at let's night Say you're on a lone stretch of highway in the Baja, and all of a sudden you see what probably or could be a, a fake police car trying to pull you over. What do you do? Do you stop or do you keep going to the next uh, locale? I, any time that somebody tries to stop, if and I occasionally you do get stopped, but if if you are in a situation where you're being stopped, do not stop out in the middle of nowhere. Keep going to where you're. To there's where some, there's, there's some, some civilization. Some civilization. Some civilization. Do, you know, so yeah. even if you look like you're getting pulled over by a, a policeman, it may be legitimate, maybe not. Don't stop. Uh, Keep going until yeah. the next service station, hey, the next. Uh, right. What if you're like in the middle of Baja? There could be. 20 miles it could be but and i'm going to clarify i mean if it's a if it's a federale or a black and white car cop car the chances are it's a cop it's a cop it, okay. it's the guys that you have to look for are the ones that stick lights on top and that sort of thing yeah and and that does happen yeah and anytime something like that happens i'm not stopping until i'm somewhere where i feel comfortable that i i've got people around me yeah okay. I, but they, i've had that happen as well yeah and, Good advice. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for the call. And when we come back, we're giving away a couple of great prizes. Wrap up the show here. Tell you about tomorrow. Stay tuned. Let's talk hook up. Mighty 1090. No matter the fishing conditions, count on the Seaguar family of fluorocarbon leader material to help you catch more fish. Fluoro Premier has a smaller diameter with the highest break strength. Plus, it is super soft. When bites are tough, tie on Fluoro Premier. Blue label is tough as nails with incredible abrasion resistance and impact strength. And new pink label is the choice for tough light conditions, giving you a little more visibility for better line control. Pick up a spool of Seaguar at your favorite tackle dealer or visit Seaguar.com. The Sport Fishing Association of California is taking a leadership role to broaden the fishing opportunities for Southern California anglers. And Saturday, December 12th, Pete Gray will be traveling to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico with the president of SAC, Captain Ken Frankie, and his staff to host a very important live broadcast from Pueblo Benito Rose Resort in Cabo. The broadcast will feature some key personnel from Mexico fisheries and help Help strengthen the ties with a sport fishing fleet in Southern California and Mexico. They will also discuss the great fishing opportunities available in Cabo San Lucas. SAC's mission is to promote tourism through marine recreation and educational activities while protecting ocean resources. By working together with Mexico, we can show our care for the resources, both at home and across the border, and our desire to take an active role to help protect the future of our fisheries. So mark your calendar for Saturday, December 12th, a very special live broadcast from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico with a sport fishing
Fishing Association of California. Check CaliforniaSportFishing.org for more information. Your hook is one of the most important parts of your fishing tackle, and that is why you should use the hook that sets the standard for quality and innovation. Gamakatsu, as Japan's leading hook manufacturer and growing at an amazing pace, Gamakatsu is responsible for introducing a unique tempering process to give Gamakatsu hook superior strength and durability. Plus, the conically needle-honed points stay sharp. Gamakatsu offers a hook for every fishing situation, including the finest one-piece ringed hooks, light wire, standard and heavy-duty live bait hooks, and the popular Nautilus circle hooks. Get Gamakatsu hooks at your favorite tackle store and stay connected to that fish of a lifetime. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three-quarter, and full-day trips available. Check out the full-service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing, and it's all right by fishermen for fishermen 1717 quivera road just off mission bay drive in mission bay book online at seaforthlanding.com you are listening to the home of the aztecs what's that clam dunk that's what i'm talking about san diego's sports leader the mighty 1090 Welcome back. Let's talk hook up on the Mighty 1090. Congratulations, Bruce and Temecki. You win the Twin Falls, the Maui Gym sunglasses with the gloss black frame. Maui pure, natural, neutral gray lens, courtesy of our friends at Maui Gym. And Hills and Ventura, you're going to have that collector item. See a Cortez book by Ray Cannon. Congratulations to you. And thanks, Gary, for the, donating that book. That's such a great book and such a great collector's item. Sure appreciate that. And uh, if somebody wants more information, wants to find you and your travels, how do we do it? You know, reach us at 800-919-2252, or you can find us at BajaFly.com. And thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation. It's been a great. Yeah, read all about it on BD Outdoors on a regular basis exactly. there and, and also Western directly. Outdoors. Right. And yeah. even a few Mexican papers. Yeah, there you go. You're all over the place. We'll see you next Saturday down in Cabo. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll look be forward there. to that. And we'll see you tomorrow on Let's Talk Hook Up right back here in the Mighty 1090 Studios. Mr. Bill Boyce, photographer, TV star, and what else do you say about Bill? Just a good guy. A lot It'll of be stuff. A lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And he'll be here in our studio here tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 a.m. We'll see you back then right here on the Mighty 